this guy's got a really sharp mind. Uh, it's been good for a long time. Very good. Uh, baseball writer. see him on TV all the time as well. Tom Ferducci, and, and uh, Tom is with us here on Tiki and Tierney. What's happening, Tom? How are you today? I'm doing very well, guys. Thanks for having me. You got it, man. So let me ask you a question. I know you're a big fan of the history of the game, obviously, and something tonight uh, will happen tonight that hasn't happened in four decades where a team will willingly bypass the DH and allow a pitcher to hit, and that pitcher is Madison Bumgarner. Now, we've seen years ago Chin Ming Wong, when he was with the Yankees, he suffered a really debilitating foot injury running the bases. More recently, Zach Granke with the oblique issue, which is always a problem, swinging the bat. Is the, I know it's cool, and it's going to be fun to watch, but is this an unnecessary risk by Bruce Bochy? I don't think so. Um, and I've talked to Bruce about this. He's actually tempted to use him more as a pinch hitter. Bum Garner is such a good hitter. He's one of his best bats on the bench when he's not starting. And Boach did tell me, you know, that may be pushing it. You know, maybe there's a situation in extra innings where I do that. Uh, but there is always that fear. I mean, the downside, obviously, with a guy like Bum, he's your best pitcher. He's your ace. Not like he's number four or five starter with a good bat. You know, Travis Wood hits a lot for the Cubs, but he's not nearly as valuable to them as Bum is to the Giants. So I think there's a fine line there. I kind of like this move. I mean, I guess if I were one of the position players on the bench, I wouldn't be too happy about it. But <laughs> those guys see Bumgarner swing the bat all the time, and including BP. And I'm telling you, he's got legit power. Yeah. I would love to see what would happen. It'll never happen. But if you gave that guy 400, 500 bats in a year, what kind of numbers he'd put up? Oh, man, he's a country boy, man. He bails hay in the offseason. <laughs> he's, he's like old man strong, and he's not an old man. The other team out in, uh, in, in the West there, the, the Dodgers have an issue with their ace, as well, Clayton Kershaw with the back. Are we are we worried about this long term? Not yet, but uh, until the reports get back, um, there's definitely concern. You know, this is something that's bothered him for a couple of weeks now, and they finally sent him back to L.A. to run some tests. I'm sure he's been getting some treatment before then and hasn't responded to that. I, I just got a sense that you, you can't really push it. Again, this guy – is so valuable to the Dodgers. I mean, the, the team is a losing team, and I mean by a lot, when he doesn't start. They're two completely different teams. When he does start, they're probably the best team in baseball. When he doesn't, you know, they're the Colorado Rockies. So they can't take any chances. You have the all-star break coming up where you, you have the opportunity to really give him some rest in and out of the break. I don't know Kirsch has been disappointed that he's come close to starting the All-Star game. He's been passed over a couple of times. Um, you know, Mike Matheny chose his own guy, Wainwright. Uh, the Mets had Harvey pitch at City Field when the game was there. He deserves to start the All-Star game, but given this physical question mark now, I would take him out of that and make sure he gets some rest. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree with you. And you talk about how this Dodgers team performs when he's not on the mound. A lot of it is, is more centered around the position players. And a guy that we've kind of were enamored with three years ago and then kind of had questions about. Now we're, we're, I'm, un I'm confused about his future. I'm talking about Yasiel Puig. Where, where does he stand in, in the Dodgers front office mind about his future? Uh, I think there's real questions about what his ceiling is. I, I think not just with the Dodgers, but everybody around baseball. Um, you know, this is a guy who was a superstar without putting up superstar numbers. What he did was he had an unbelievable first month in his big leagues. I mean, I think he was the first one since Joe DiMaggio with 40 hits in his first month in the big leagues. People had no clue who this guy was. You know, he signed from Cuba, hadn't played in the previous year and a half. Um, it was, let's see what this guy could do, and it was Challenge City with fastballs. Well, they started figuring out the book on him that – he doesn't like pitches in on the plate. He chases sliders off the plate. And I'll tell you what, this guy has been a very ordinary offensive player at best since his first month in the big leagues. And he's essentially, in terms of reputation, been riding the coattails of, my goodness, who is this guy that first month of the season where he looked like, you know, Mike Trout or Bryce Harper or somebody else like that. Uh, he just hasn't been that good of an offensive player. And given the fact that now you're talking about three, four years here, the fact that you're not seeing any growth whatsoever makes me at least question what his feeling is. Physically, mm -hmm. it's easy to see. I mean, you watch him sometimes with that arm in the outfield, the way he runs the bases, when he gets a hold of one, how far he can hit it. It's great to see. You're just not seeing it nearly often enough. We're talking to baseball Tom Verducci with us here on Tiki and Tierney, CBS Sports Radio. Now, Tom, anybody could go to a website, click it, and uh, look at the top of the standings and – 
make a notation who's leading the way in the respective divisions here. What I'm more interested from you, um, the teams that are kind of lying in the weeds, you know, five and a half, six games out, whether it's the Red Sox or Toronto, the Mets fall there, the Dodgers, the Astros, who obviously have turned a corner, the Royals. Of some of those teams right now, wild card jostling, and, and, and who's eliminating the Astros because they're obviously playing so well? Which other teams that I mentioned you think are – are either poised to make a big trade or just the way they're constructed now to make a big move in the standings? I think St. Louis is going to make a move here. I think they've underachieved a little bit. Their starting pitching was really rocky the first couple of months of the season. Um, But I do think they're starting to stabilize some things here. And I I do think they have a run coming in the second half. Uh, Don't get me wrong. They're not catching the Cubs. Nobody's catching the Cubs. But they will be in the wild card hunt for sure. Uh, I'd be surprised if they didn't. Um, the other teams you mentioned, I still think that East is up for grabs. I know Baltimore looks really, really good right now. But with you know how shaky their starting pitching has been, and they've done a great job overcoming that. The bullpen's been fantastic. I still have to think there's a bill coming due for that kind of uh, lack of length they're getting from their starting pitchers. So that I think Boston and Toronto are going to get back. I still think that's going to be a three-team race in the East Division. You know, Tom, um I remember growing up on Sunday mornings, I would race to the, my parents were still in bed and we had the daily news delivered. I'd go down and I, and I couldn't wait to just inhale and absorb all the stats and they would have like league leaders. And, and at that point in my life, the Yankees were bad. So like when I saw Espinosa, uh, Alvaro Espinosa hit like 209, I was actually excited as a kid that I saw a Yankees name in, in, in bold face in, in the New York paper. And I bring that up because I was doing some number crunching this morning and you're obviously, I'm sure you're, you're already ahead of this. There's just such a, a, a dearth of 300 hitters. I mean, compared to, you know, what we used to see, it seems like so few hitters put the bat on the ball and, 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 and so few hitters go foul line to foul line. Do you You're know, right. in, 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 in tangible terms, have you spoken to minor league directors or people, talent evaluators, why the erosion of batting average? I mean, what is the most simple reason? Uh, I'll give you a couple of reasons. Number one, I think what Saber Metrics have done, and those are the people running front offices now, is they've sent a message out there to a generation of hitters now that batting average is overrated. You know, and that you can hit 230, but as long as you hit 25 home runs and take your walks, you're going to get paid very well in the game. So the idea of hitting 300 historically, I mean, we all know what that means, right? Something really special. Mm-hmm. To this generation of hitters, it means nothing. Mm. So batting average has been devalued strikeouts definitely devalued right there's no taboo to punching out 150 times no a hundred times anymore so hitters now are selling out just to hit the long ball and i kind of get it because you guys watch games look at the velocity coming out of not just bullpens but rotations velocity's got up now 11 12 consecutive years the average major league fastball was 89 about a decade ago now it's 92 so that gives you less time as a hitter to read and react so you have to sell out and you know, it's funny. I talked to Evan Longoria, and I think he's kind of the prototypical modern hitter. He's a great hitter. He's made all-star games. He's made a ton of money. Mm-hmm. And I was like, how come he don't have a two-strike approach? And he's like, you know what? I get three swings. I hit the ball out of the park. I'm going to take all three of them. Wow. If I just try to shorten up and, you know, with two strikes, I hit a rollover ground ball to third base, that's the same as a strikeout. So I'm going to make sure two strikes. I'm letting it fly. Yeah, but Tom, hang on. But Tom, but, but it's not though, Tom. And I, I know it's a great example with Longoria. But if there's guys on base, there's there's situational aspects of that that where Longoria is wrong. I mean, if there's a man on second and you don't make contact, you know, if you do roll one or if you push one to second base, you can score a run without the virtue of a hit. So to totally me, that, that's faulty you, logic. And, and we see this every year in the postseason, right? Look yep. at the Giants. Look at the Royals. Why were they winning? Because they did things like that. Yeah. Uh, and that was the bugaboo for the Cubs last year. They were the worst in the major leagues at getting guys in from third base with less than two outs. And it, it rose up and bit them in the postseason. Now I think they're better equipped this year with guys like Hayward and Zobrist who do play situational baseball. But, yeah, it's the difference between playing individual baseball where you're going to get paid and playing team baseball where you're going to win a pennant. Mm. Uh, Tom, before I let you go, biggest individual disappointment this season on the mound or in the batter's box who is one player that really jumps out like man what what's going on with this guy well to me that's andrew mccutcheon because to me i always called him mr reliable i mean from day one jump street in the big leagues this guy was one of the elite players in the game 
I'm talking about base running, defense, offensively, power, hitting for average. He's everything you want in a franchise player. And, you know, I can't recall the last time I saw a player pretty much fully healthy have the wheels come off completely. I mean, his base running has gone completely downhill. He doesn't run uh, steel bases anymore. His mm-hmm. defense has suffered the last three years, actually, but it's down again this year. Uh, the big reason why the Pirates are, I think, team-wise, a big disappointment as well. And like anybody else, they've had injuries. But, yeah, when you're talking about somebody who was so consistent for so long and just came down in so many levels, uh, that to me is the biggest surprise. I, I'm actually at a loss to explain why it is. I know recent weeks, last couple of weeks, he's had a thumb injury that nagged him. Yep. But got off to a slow start and never got going. I thought you might say Keuchel uh, as a pitcher, Dallas Keuchel. You know, it's funny that Keiko now is pitching a little bit better, but yeah, for that guy who just owned everybody last year, ERA over five, it's really weird that for some reason he has, has not been able to sink the ball the way that he did last year. And if you watched the pitch last year, if he threw the ball at the knees, that was high for him. Mm-hmm. And this year, it's just the opposite. He has not been able to get the ball down. So you mentioned Astros are playing much, much better the last two months. Uh, if that guy gets back on point, uh, they're going to have some run in the second half because they are very talented. Yeah, I wouldn't write them off. Tom, good chatting. Been a while. Tom Berducci, one of the uh, great fertile baseball minds in, in the entire country. I think you're really good at what you do, and we appreciate the time, Tom. Thanks, buddy. Always a pleasure, guys. Thank you.